Welcome, welcome everybody. About to get underway. Oh yeah, about that time. Welcome, 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 everybody. Another live stream for you guys. Let me be doing some more editing tonight. Actually, we're going to be trying out another new uh, piece of software, an app that I found. It's a free app, kind of like Dark Table that we did last week. Should be fun and exciting. That's what I'm thinking. All right. Sounding good. We're ready to go. All right, so this week we let's let's look at last week real fast. So last week we looked at a software, an app, whatever you want to call it, called Darktable. Did some editing with it, and we realized this is a very, very intense program. A lot to it, and I had a lot of people reach out to me. Uh, they actually liked learning about Darktable, and a few actually said, "Hey, I've used Darktable." 
Um, there's some videos you can watch if you really want to get into it more. Uh, it's a great program. A lot you can do with it. So I still have it installed on my computer because I do. I do plan to look into it a little bit more. But this evening, no dark table. This time we're going to be looking at a an app, program, whatever you want to call it, called Photoscape X. It is a free program. Like all the ones I've been trying to find you guys, it is free. Check this over here real fast. And now there is a pro version and a regular version. Pro version, from what I understand, is not much more to it than the free version. This is everything you need to edit photos, it says. Colors and filters. Film effect and light leak. It's got image transform. And if you check out some of the other features, you can see it's got your viewers, it's got your editors, it's got some cutout. Uh, it's got batch. So you can do uh, batch edit multiple photos. I know a lot of people like that. It's got some collage to it. A GIF or GIF creator, however you want to say that. And it's got some other little things going on with it. Probably won't jump into every single aspect of it tonight. But, you know, I thought it'd be kind of fun to look into another free program. And since everybody's been been enjoying this, uh, these live streams lately, you know, let's just keep them going. Again, if you're just getting here, Photoscape X is the uh, program we're going to be looking at tonight. Actually, it's technically an app, I believe, for Windows. Should be quite interesting. So let's... Uh, Let's dive right into it. Let's see if I can find it real fast. I think I have it loaded. Let's make sure. Possibly not. Photoscape X. There it is. Now, I do have some images already loaded into this program. I thought I'd give us, give us a little bit of a head start working with this one. Loaded them in, and immediately I saw one thing I did not like, and that is how small the little images are on the left side here. They're so small. They're so small and cute. So small, so cute. I can't even see them. They're so small. I'm guessing there's a way to change that. So let's find out, shall we? Um, so if we can figure this first part out, how do we change these? That is the question, right? So we get, um, that's a refresh. Obviously just refreshes. We can add the favorites, subfolders, um, go back, go to parent folder. Okay. It's gotta be in settings somewhere. All right. So we can, um, relist them. It is easy to a, we've got different dimensions, size, date. We can change the outline. Just kind of interesting. I kind of like the block. I think, uh, I mean, that one's not bad. We'll use that one tonight. I'm going to guess, I'm going to guess this is it. There we go. Now we can change the size of them. That is nice to know. Let's go to about here. Okay. So if I want to edit a photo, I just click on it once. All right. So there's one photo. Hey, that was relatively easy. That was fine. Got that in there real fast. Uh, so just to show you real fast last week, using dark table. And this is the final image I came out with. I thought it came out looking pretty good. A lot going on with it. Nice and sharp. It's got some good colors to it. Uh, I reduced the noise just a little bit because everybody hates noise except me. I like a little bit of grit. I call it a little bit of noise in there. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. It's a little bit bigger on the full display so you guys can really see it and see what it looks like. But I thought it came up pretty good. I'm guessing I'm going to stick with the same type of images this week. Maybe not the exact, exact same image. But I do intend to use the same um, volleyball photos and probably look at a football photo as well. And we can go from there. So let's jump in. Let's try and find us an action photo right away. Probably end up with about the same one. At least it's kind of good. All I have to do is click once to get the photo there. That's nice. Nice. I like that. I like that. Where's a good one? Where's a good one? 
There's a good action one right there. I've used that one a lot though. Let's, let's pick a different one. I've done that one quite a few times. Same with this one. Probably because they're, they're great images. I really like those images. Let's see what else we can find though. Hey, look, it's out of focus. What the heck happened? Oh, focus down there for some reason. Hmm, interesting, right? Let's keep going. We'll find something better. We'll find something good to edit. See what we got. Got some fun ones there. Got a photo of my intern who was helping me out for a little while. He's now moved on to bigger and better things. What do we got? Let's look down here a little farther. Uh, okay, come on. We'll find one. Don't worry. I've got several hundred photos. Ah, I think I know which one we could probably do. Let's see if I can find it. Not that one. That photo <laughs> focused on the guy behind. I like how this one focused on the back here. That was my fault. That was all my fault. I admit it. That was my fault. It wasn't the camera. That was me doing that. Though. Okay, so I'm trying to do normal things like I do in a Lightroom, which just doesn't work out with this one. So let's keep going. I'm trying to double click it to zoom in a little bit. That that just didn't work. What's this one look like here? Got him. Got that I know which one I think I want to edit I just got to try and find it now it's down a ways maybe maybe not see some cool ones there but it's not the one I want I'm looking for a specific image to want or we might just go back to the one I had earlier because then we could do a comparison and see which one we like the best. Or not, you know, we could just keep going. We'll find one. We'll find one. Just stick with me. We got this. Uh, but so far, looking at this program looks pretty basic. All right, let's just go back up. No sense spending the entire stream trying to find an image, right? So we'll just go to this one right here here okay so the first thing we're want, want, going to want to do do some cropping ah look i found that right away all right hey figgy thanks for joining us and just in case anybody's interested i do have a lurk feature now figgy knows probably how to use that she can demonstrate that when she gets a chance Hopefully the command will work. All right, so let's get into this. Okay, so we got some different choices here. We got a uh, custom, got the original. We can do a one to one. It's not really changing it though. Hmm. I figured when I clicked on this, it would change that. But it's not. Oh, that's interesting. A little perspective crop. That's kind of crazy. You could probably make things look really, really strange, I'm guessing, with this one. I've never seen this in a program before. Let's see what that does. Um, crop. Let's see what it does. It didn't do anything. I thought it would do something really crazy. Let's see if Control-Z. Control-Z takes us back. I like that. Okay, let's go back to crop again. Um, is there another way to crop it, then? I would think you would just hit, let's just hit cancel. Let's go back. I want to do circular. Let's just do a regular old crop. Now, surprisingly, it's not changing. I figured if I did five by seven, it would turn into like a five by seven, but it's not doing that. Or three by five. Probably doing something wrong since I've ever, never used it. Well, let's try free. What can we do a free? Probably something like this would work. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward and basic, doing the free crop. Okay, so I can't do that, so do I, so if I hit crop, does it crop it? Now it's gone. Well, that's interesting. Now the photo is gone. Can I bring it back? It's, it's disappeared. Now I don't want to save it. That's not what I wanted. 
Wow, that was so strange. Uno mas. Let's try it one more time. Um, so let's see if we can do this. And then pull this up. Crop. There we go. Okay, that's a little better. About what I anticipated should be happening. Also, we do have a resize if we want to just resize it. That's kind of nice. Not great, but not bad. Get rid of that. So let's go resize. We got Bloom. Don't care about Bloom. ACR crop magic color. I'm guessing that's going to take everything it's and change it all by itself. So it's preserving skin tones. Okay. I don't see... I guess there's a little difference brings out the yellows and the blues a little more hmm interesting hey we can do a mask i'm not in mood to do a mask right now <laughs> not with this version i don't know it well enough so if we do some magic color that's way too much color go down here let's uh, what if you go middle so we got a bright we got that one Okay, so it's pretty basic. You can do some basic adjustments on that. I'm not going to worry about it right now. Let's move on to something else. What do we got? HDR. We're not worried about HDR. We've got some other adjustments. Auto color. Apply. Let's see what it does. Um, where's like a before and after? There's revert. That goes all the way back. Undo. No, we don't want to do that. There we go. Compare. That's kind of a compare. I'd rather see it side by side. That would be so much nicer instead of this. Now, I do know this is a basic photo editing program. So I um, may not be able to do some of the things the other ones have been able to do. So let's do an apply here. I, I don't like that. I can't really see exactly what it's doing. Let me, let's get rid of that. Let's undo, redo. So it's, it's cleaned it up a little bit. Not too bad. Let's keep going. Let's undo that one. Let's check out some other things. Let's try the auto contrast. And we will apply. Undo. Redo, it looks the same as the other one. Let's go back to, let's go back to that. Auto contrast, got a threshold. Let's put that way up there. All right, apply it. Let's check out the, let's do a compare, which isn't great. Not doing a lot to the image. That's, that's just what I can definitely say for sure right now. It's not doing very much. So let's try some. Can I zoom in just by doing that? No, I gotta do it down here. Let's zoom in a little bit, see if we can get rid of some of this noise and just see what it does with the reduced noise. Okay, luminance. Okay, let's get rid of that and some color. Let's move both those up. It definitely did do it. Let's apply it. And let's go back out and see if we can see. Definitely softened it up. It's not very sharp now. Yeah, it's definitely not as sharp as it was, but that's when you go through and you add some sharpness, right? All right, so let's sharpen it up. Radius, threshold, put that up, give it a lot of, let's sharpen it about right there, and then we are going to apply it. I don't like that I'm not really seeing it doing much. Let's do the, okay, so it did sharpen it up. It did bring back here, if you look, in this area, the number and the name of the school. We did bring us some of that back, which is always good. We like that down here. I guess that's not bad. That's not too bad. Um, so far, looking uh, just as a basic editor, it's not too bad. What else can we do to this? Let's find out. We got some film room. It's heuristic. So there's a pro version. You can get color bounce and selective color. 
So you pay some extra money and you get all these, you get all this great stuff down here, it looks like. So you get selective color, remove color, cast, hue, saturation, colorize, gradient, gradient, black and white, opacity, chromatic, gradient, opacity. Okay. I don't know how much you'd have to pay, but you're going to have to pay to be able to use those. I don't, just for a basic one, you probably don't need any of them. I think you could get by. Just what they're showing so far. And right now, yeah, for basic one, it's not doing too bad. Now, what else we got? Let's check out. Do some white balance to see what this does. Corrects yellow or blue tint in photos taken indoors or in dark settings. Click an area in the photo that should be a true white to balance the photo. Look for white areas like dishes, white clothing, or white walls. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. I've seen a lot of people do this. And they go to do the white balance. They'll take the little eyedropper, and they'll pick a spot that they think should be white. Unfortunately, you don't know for sure how white the white is. So when you're doing it, it's not that great. So Because you would think this right here should be the white. So definitely made that red. Let's just apply it real fast. Let's get back on the photo here. I just, I did it. Let's see, what have we got? That's before and now it's after. It's really red now. So let me undo the white balance one more time. Let me do it for you guys. So again, you go to white balance. We're gonna preserve the luminosity. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to pick a spot you think is white, which I would say this is probably the closest thing to white aside from the ball, but that looks a little bit off because the lighting. So I would probably pick this. Even then truthfully you need like 8%, 18% gray, but we pick this and then we apply it. Now, if you do a compare, hard to see it doing anything. Let's then do again. It didn't really look, look like it did anything. Let's find out again. Sorry, getting distracted looking at everything else. All right, go back to white balance. So we're going to click that spot and we apply it. And I really don't see it doing much. Okay, so let's zoom in. It's, it's, making the uniforms a little more red, which truthfully, they weren't that color red. They're more like the original photo here. So the white balance isn't quite working how it probably should. So let's undo it. We'll try some other photos later. Don't worry about that. We're going to do that. Don't worry. So what's this surrealistic, surrealistic, I can't even say the word. Okay, so it just kind of gives you some interesting looks to it. So nothing we would ever use, probably unless we're trying to be more of into the art realm. Which we don't want to do that, do we? All right, so let's just cancel that one. That one's not much that one's not any fun at all. In a vignette. Some people like putting a vignette on their thing on their things, on their uh, photos. And okay, it's, it's doing it. It's nothing. You can see it there really good. If I zoom out, you can see what it's doing a little bit better. I'm not a big fan of vignettes. I don't really use them. All right, so let's just get rid of that one. Okay, let's do this. All right, so let's check out some more things. What else do they have? They have auto levels. Let's check our auto levels. Let's do this. Let's revert back to the very beginning. Go to auto level and see. Oh my gosh, really? Now, allowing them to decide really, look, put, it's putting like a blue tint. I see a lot of blue coming into the colors and that's just not what you want. So get rid of that. Kylie, what's this one do? 
That's nothing we want. You wrote pattern field levels. That's uh, we don't want to blur it. Auto contrast. No. So with this program, it looks like you have to pay to get some specific coloring if you want to do some selective coloring. So you'd be able to do all these things right here. Let's take a look at these real fast. You can do a macro of curves, clone stamp, spotlight, a little bit of lens correction. Hue saturation, selective color, so all this stuff. So um, let's find out what does it cost to buy it? Let's find out real fast. How much is this program? I'm waiting for it to load up so we can find out exactly how much this program cost. But we'll get there. It's loading very slowly. And I'll let you know what the price is in a second to get all these other fabulous things. Even black and white. Which, truthfully, it's black and white. You should be able to just get rid of the colors. But let's go to color. So I can't tell you how much the program is because um, the requested page cannot be found. Let me show you real fast. We're sorry. The page you requested cannot be found. So yeah, we, uh, we're not going to know exactly how much it is. I'll try and find out and I'll put it in the show notes a little bit later. Let's get back over here and have a little fun, shall we? Let's see what we can do. We can brighten it. We can darken it. We can make it look a little deeper. And it's not doing a it's not doing a terrible job with some of this stuff. And I know some photographers would probably really like how this is looking. Um, for me, the color is a little too deep, so let's lighten them up a little bit. Get rid of some of the darkening, bright spin. And, okay, let's go back to crop again real fast. Uh, crop. Whoops, not that one. Go back to the crop because I want to only work on what we're going to work. All right, so what else we got? Let's get back to color here. So we can darken the highlights, which is doing some really interesting stuff to the background. If you take a look at this, see the, see the back here, the yellow, what the yellow's doing? I'm just messing with highlights. And it's really messing the highlights up. And it's not really darkening the highlights as much as you think it should be. Not in a manner that I feel it should be doing. Let's put it that way. Okay, so we can lighten the shadows. Okay, it's so lighten the shadows, so let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, so that's kind of doing what it should be doing. Um, Actually, no, it's not. Because the arm here is not in the, sh it's not a shadow, but it's, it's applying this across the whole image, not just in the shadows. So I would think it would be working the hair, maybe some areas down this way, maybe the bleachers. Lightening the shadows, it's affecting the entire image, which is not what it should do in my opinion. Interesting. All right. So let's mess with the. All right, I'm gonna drop that back down. We'll just leave it on that right now. Now what I want to do is let's check out the contrast. Okay, the contrast is crazy as well. It's really making it contrasty. Let's just leave that where that is as, as well too. Saturation. Now saturation is doing a little bit. It's, it's affecting the parts of the image it should be affect, affecting. And yeah, it's not real good. Temperature. Okay, so temperature is doing what it should be doing, it looks like. Now, again, first time I've used this program or app. I guess this is an actual app for Microsoft or Microsoft Windows. And, of course, you always got to get used to new programs, know how they work. Lightroom took a little while to get used to. And once you get used to it, they change it, <laughs> but you still have the basics down. You can do some auto color. Let's do a high off. So let's do this thing. Let me get rid of this. 
Oh, so I can't do that now. Okay, so let's start from the beginning. Let's start with that again. Just play with the entire image. No cropping on this one. It does have some auto color. Let's try high auto color. We're going to have to zoom in though. Because it's not really showing me much. Choose these because we got a lot of color going on in here. There's low. There's a medium. And not really much happening. Let's keep it on low. I don't like what it's doing. Auto levels. Let's do high. Boy, it really brightened it up, didn't it? Washed it out just a little bit, a little bit of low, a little bit of medium. All right, let's leave it on medium. Auto contrast, high. Not doing a lot to it. This is just barely touching up the contrast, which I don't mind that. So we brighten the image. Okay, that's affecting globally, which is fine. Same thing with darken, deepen. So deepens affecting more of the darker parts of the image, it looks like. Vibrance, we all know what that should do, and it's kind of doing it, but it's messing with the skin tones. Let's check out the skin tones here. Check out her face. A little too much, a little too much. Clarity. Back out just a little bit again. Got the clarity going on. Yeah, it's doing a little bit. Not a ton, not a ton. All right, so what else we got we can do? Let's just reset all those. So that's how it looks now. Can I go back now? No, I can't. Hmm. Hmm. I can do a negative image. That's kind of interesting if you want to get artsy. I don't like this down here, though. I wish I could just double click it and get where I want to go. That's okay. Really, we could do a grayscale, which is close to a black and white, so you wouldn't have to pay for black and white. Some sepia. And actually, there's black and white right there. It's really, really dark black and white. Really dark. You'd have to adjust this. You could darken it even more. It's lighting the shadows. See, again, the shadows, it's affecting the entire image. It's globally affecting the image. Not just the shadows. It's affecting everything. Don't care for that. Let's go to film. What does film do? Oh, it gives us some choices. Look at this. Now we can just pick something and go with it. That's a cross process app. What's that? Appa? That's cafeteria. And not a lot going on. Deal with Let's go to dirt. Let's see what's dirt look like. Oh, see, that's interesting. Oh, did you see that? You see that? I can actually add like dirt to the image. Kind of like there's dirt on the sensor. I dropped my sensor before I came in here. And I'm going to put that on the image. Again, we can't figure out the pro version. Um, sports photography, we're not really going to need that unless maybe you're shooting motocross, maybe. Maybe some type of triathlon. All right, so we got textures we can add as well to the background. Kind of interesting. Again, nothing we as sports photographers would probably deal with. Extras. What's the extras? There we got scratch. Yeah, I dropped my lens and I still took images and now they're all scratched up. I'm sorry. Again, though, if you're trying to be a little more artsy with it, um, I think somebody might be kind of interested in that. Go for the old photo look. Now, see, the old photo look is kind of cool. I kind of like that one, actually. Don't care for the other ones as much. Okay, what do we got for overlays? We have a vintage. A bunch of vintage type overlays. So that's kind of interesting. Nothing too, too exciting, truthfully. Those are looks again do Okay, so we got light. So we have light. Light leaks. Okay, so let's see what these do. So there you go. If you want to add like some little light coming through. Again, more artsy type stuff for your image if that's what you were interested in doing. But once again, for sports photography, probably nothing we're really going to deal with. We're going to go through them all and just take a look at them. Different colors. And it looks like you can kind of change the direction of the light. 
Yeah, so you could do something like that, maybe. Don't know. Nothing I want, Polka. We already know about this. Add some little bubbles to it. Bubbles! <laughs> There's bubbles! Lens flare. Here we go. The lens flare I could see being used sometimes. Not much, though. You could do something like this. Bring it back like that. There you go. You could do something like that with the lens flare, but still. Ah, oh, then we got different frames for it. Different interesting frames. Hmm. <laughs> Nothing real exciting. So it's definitely a basic photo editing program. So maybe if you're a beginner just getting started, it may, might not be bad. Um, but then again, it could be bad because you might get drawn into some of these extra things like film look, which you could overdo and it's something you probably don't want. Hey, Sean, still not home, huh? At gas station restaurant. All right, pick me up a drink, please. You can just drop it on by. I'll be here. Got some insert. I don't care about inserting stuff. Oh, so you can insert. So you could put a sticker. Okay. How do you do that? Sticker. I don't see anybody do the sticker in there. Oh, there it is. There we go. There we go. Ah, that's what we want. How do you like that? Now since she's hitting a laughing, crying face instead of the volleyball. And it's pretty crazy looking. Well, Sean, please be safe out there. Make sure you get home in one piece. So we got some text to it as well. Got some figures. A little magnifying glass if you wanted to do something like that. Nothing I would really want to do. Let's undo this stuff. So I can keep going back. So that's kind of the history in most programs is down here. It's the undo. It looks like it's doing, it's not non-destructive editing either. It's definitely the opposite. So what tools do we have? We can do some draw, some painting, erasing. So what can I erase? Can I erase like this guy? Okay, but I need to put something in there then if I'm going to erase it. That doesn't make any sense, does it? Add or subtract. That's what I did. Brush shape, different shapes for the brush. What else we got? We got some painting. We got some drawing. Check out the painting. So we could probably paint this a different color. Yeah, nothing too exciting. Oh, we'll get back here. Get rid of that. What else we got? Light frame. I still want to go back to... With the basics here, the editing. So Bloom, let's see what they have. Okay, so the Bloom does what a Bloom should do. Nothing I really care about. Auto contrast. We have add noise, reduce noise. Got some soft skin. All right, let's check out the soft skin. Let's see what that does. Soft skin. Let's apply that. Now let's um, compare. Yeah, soften it up. It's, but it also, it, what I'm finding with this program is it's not affecting just specific areas like soft skin it should just affect the skin it's called soft skin for that reason, but it's doing a global effect as you can see her uniform. So it's just de a denoid, denoise, just taking the noise out of everything, not just the skin, which kind of doesn't seem right. It should only be doing the skin is what you would think. I mean, come on, let me, let me just complain a little more. It softens skin. Okay. So that's, that's kind of crazy. Uh, so as right now, I don't really care for this program. Be straight up front. Dilate. Okay. That's just nasty. I don't care about that at all. How about an erode? That just muddies up the picture. All right, so let's just get back, back to the basic stuff. 
I don't care for their auto stuff at all. It doesn't seem to do anything really good. Let's just kind of, let's, um, let's get all the way back out of this, shall we? Let's jump way out. And then maybe we'll look at one more image. We'll call it a short night tonight. Okay, so we edit, let's go to, we don't care about resizing. Um, so we would want to crop it. It's already cropped. I still think this should be showing. Should be showing you what it looks like. But it is not doing that. Huh, interesting. All right, let's try it one more time. So we got the crop. So I accept the crop. Crop is fine. Okay, so contrast let's move down to contrast let's see what the contrast looks like a little bit of contrast going on um the way it's affecting the image i don't like I'm not sure if i can i can explain it great or maybe it's just because i'm used to other programs and the way they use the contrast so let's just let's stop there on contrast let's just move down no auto stuff today. Sharpen. All right, so let's do some sharpening. And the sharpen, I like to get in a little bit closer. Like, that. actually, you know what you should do first? Let's cancel that. Let's get rid of the noise. Um, noise, noise, noise. Where to go? Where to go? Where to go? Reduce noise. Let's do that first. Can you do an auto? Will it let you do a comp? No, it won't. It's a luminance. Color noise. So you definitely see what it's doing. It's definitely softening everything. We're just going to do a little bit of it. Okay, so we're going to apply that. You can see it did just enough. But then you have to go back because you're losing. Zoom in here on this. This isn't quite as sharp as it should be. So let's go over here and let's add some sharpness back to it now. Uh, let's do the amount. Radius should be fine. Okay, so that's good. Just a little bit. Bring some of that back. Jumping back out. Okay, so let's see what this looks like now. Come on. So it's actually not bad. I'm not hating it. I don't like how uh, the controls are affecting the image overall. So let's check out white balance. And again, it says to do something like this. Let's see if we can, you can see a little pixels in there. It's kind of interesting. But it makes it look more, it has a blue tint to it now. Excuse me. That's what I'm seeing anyway. I don't really like that. So I am not going to use the white balance. Let's go back to it though. There's got to be a way. Hmm, let's see here. What else can we mess with? Let's see, it doesn't let me. It doesn't let me select what I want with the white balance to really, let's try appearance here. Not great. I eh, will leave it. Let's just leave it. We'll just leave it. Move on. Let's move on. What else we got? Can't do any of these because you have to be pro. Let me try one more time. See if I can, see if I can figure out how much it is. Despeckle. All right. Despeckle. Okay, interesting. So I'll check out her hair. Let me go full screen on this one. Okay, I'm full screen. So check out the hair when I do the despeckle. It's despicable despeckle. It's kind of messing with the hair. Weird. That is just weird. That is really strange. Never seen that before. Yeah, I can honestly say I've never seen this before. Despeckle. 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 Say the word. You can see it in the hair, what it's doing. Let me get this back to you guys here. You can see it. It's messing with the hair. Why? Why mess with the hair? Yeah, that's just strange. Uh, we're not going to be, um, yeah, we're not going to be doing that one. Interesting, though. Something new I've never seen. 
Don't need any film green blur, so realistic. Don't need any of those. Replace color. Nah, open yet. Nah, we don't need to care about any of that stuff. So, yeah, nothing real good. I'm not real happy with this program. I think, like I said, if you're just getting started, maybe. I think there's some better programs. Even Lightroom has the, their free programs a lot better than this. And no, I still can't find out how much this is. It won't pull up the page to let me know. Okay, so let's do this. Let's um, let's go to viewer. Let's find us another. Let's find us some different photo. Okay, so this was raw. What does it do with JPEGs? Maybe it's more a JPEG editing software. Let's find out, shall we? I got the JPEGs. We got the JPEGs. Let's see what's happening. Not quite. There we go. Okay, so pull them in. Okay. They're slowly coming in. That's really slow. Come on in. Get in here. And yes, I shoot both JPEGs in RAW. I edit the JPEGs usually the night after the game. Get them out right away. So people can see them. All right, so let's get back to this image now. We, let's see what it does with JPEGs. It might be different with the JPEGs. So let's just zoom in. It's actually a good looking JPEG image right there. Let's get rid of that. Let's go back over here. Um, all right, let's do some auto color and just see what it does. All right, apply it. Actually, not bad. It's it did better on the JPEG than it did on the other one. That is for sure. All right, so let's revert. Let's go back. Um, check out the auto contrast. Let's see what that. Let's just keep that right there and see what happens. Okay, okay, this is interesting. This is interesting. There's the contrast. Actually did pretty good on the contrast. So what it looks like so far, okay, let's, and let's revert back. Let's try another one. Let's try auto levels. Let's see what it does with the levels. I'm just gonna keep that right in the middle. Okay, so this program looks like when it comes to JPEGs, it does a much better do much better job than with the raw file. Interesting. So maybe if you're only working on JPEGs, this could be the program for you or the app, whichever you want to call this. Um, definitely is doing a lot better job dealing with JPEGs than it did with the raw files. It may not be a heavy enough type of program to dig deep into the raw image because there's so much information in a raw image that's why a lot of us photographers use the raw image because you can pull back so much information so let's um well, let's do this then let's uh find us a football photo because we all love football photos and let's just see if i have a jpeg available yes i usually shoot raw and jpeg doesn't mean it's on this computer all right we'll go there and see what happens here Let it pull in, while, pull in while it's doing that. Grab a drink. Ah, oh, there they go. All right, finally, finally pulling in. Come on, shouldn't take that long. Man, that's really, really slow. Well, maybe we can find one as we look through this. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, come on. Let's do it. You can do it. Okay, let's go up here and see if we can pull them in faster than this way. Because you never know. Okay, those there they are, right up there. There they are. They're getting there.
slowly finding their way in. And I'm going to start scrolling, see if we can find a good image we can mess with here. My fun referee. I like that picture. I always like getting nice pictures of the officials. All right, let's check one of these out. Maybe we'll do one of these real fast. So many to choose from. I'm going to go up to this one. Let's do this one right here. All right, so let's get rid of this piece. Let's do a crop real fast. I still wish it would do that, but let's get rid of custom. Although custom can do a size and rate, and I don't care about that though. Let's just do free. We just basically want this area right here. So we'll get a nice little area. Yeah, there we go. All right, so let's check it out and see what it does. So this is a JPEG. Let's see what it does with the JPEG. Let's start with the auto color once again. Go ahead and apply it. Undo. I'm not seeing much difference in this one though. Let's zoom in a little bit more. I'll look at their helmets and that. Let's see. Undo. Redo. Okay, not seeing much happening on this one though. Yeah, so I don't see much happening on the football photo. Let's um let's uh revert back. Oh, too far. Let's get back to there. Okay. Let's try the auto contrast and see what that does. Um didn't see much happen again. It's not doing too much with these ones. Let's do levels. Let's see if it changes the levels because it's a little bit dark. Let's see if it fixes the levels. So it's not really doing much with the levels either. Quite strange. This program, I cannot figure out. This is a JPEG. And the last JPEGs it worked really well with. This JPEG, not quite as good. So the volleyball one, yeah, it, it I see it seemed to work really good. Um, this one. So let's try. Let's zoom in. This isn't too noisy of a photo, but let's see what it does with the. Um, let's reduce some noise, shall we? Let's bump them both up to about there. And it definitely softens stuff a little bit. So then you'd have to go back and sharpen it. <laughs> that a little more sharpening. Apply. All right, so let's see what that did. So it definitely brought the brought stuff back. Huh, interesting. But I mean, it's not doing a terrible job. I, it just seems like it could do better than this. But the sharpening definitely worked. I can see it bringing the sharpness, <laughs> the sharpness back out, which is nice. I want to soften. Let's try it. Okay, well, let's try the white balance then, shall we? So this is obviously white, correct? That's pretty white. Or is this white? Okay, so what did it do? So if you go by that, the white balance was set correctly because it's hardly doing anything to it. So let's then do white balance again. I want to pick a different spot this time. White balance, white balance, white balance. So let's pick a different, let's pick up here. Not much difference. Nice. But down there, it definitely does. Then you can see it. Hmm. Not too bad. Not too bad. By the white balance, zoom out a little bit. What else we got we can mess with here? Check out the D speckle, see what it does on 
for these guys. Let's zoom in a little bit more. Not quite sure what this is supposed to do. You can see the areas of the images affecting. I'm not sure what's purpose. I'll have to look into that for you guys and find out, but you can see what it's doing. I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to be. Yeah, that one's kind of useless. Definitely don't like that one. So we have point color emphasis control. Let's see what this does. Okay, okay, cool. So now we can actually mess with specific colors. Let's take blue. I'll take an eyedropper and go right there. Ooh. Okay, it's almost like a selective color. Which if that's what you're into, I know some people definitely like the selective color. Let me get, ah, crap. Darn it, get back here. I'm not done with that. All right, let's try it again. Let's try, we have some purple, let's try purple. That brings out just a purple. Now that's kind of cool. I mean, if you, if you like the specific colors being pulled out, that's kind of cool. I like what it does to the rest of the image. I like that. What other colors do we have? Kind of a gold color. There we go. Yeah, so you can obviously, if you want, this feature is kind of fun. I kind of like this feature. It's kind of playful. So I'll say you pick that. So anything skin tone-ish. Reset. What else we got? Um, so what about green? If you go to the green. So if you want to do something artistic, again, artistic, speaking this program gives you lots of options and this one i actually like what it does with this it makes it pretty easy to um just select specific colors if you want like there's yellow in the background so if i click yellow anything has a yellow tint to it it definitely messes with it and let's check something out here again let's do the blue and you can mess with the foreground of it so you can pick out the blue even more then you get your background saturation. That's a lot of saturation. Some people would like this image like that. They would think that is nice looking. Then you can just control whichever color you want to mess with. So that's um, semi-interesting. So we do have a re replace color. Let's see what we do with this. So if we go like this and pick the, that. So then you can replace the color. So if I were to replace it with red, I'm guessing it will. If I go over there, I put some red into it. Or I do that there as well. All right, so let's reset that and cancel that. So it's uh, interesting. Interesting program. Uh, let's try the dehaze. Let's mess with that. Dehaze. Compare. That's, um, doesn't really do a lot. It makes it look like an ugly image. I don't like that at all. So we're not going to use that. We're not going to mess with it. Well, hello, Figgy. Um, do I have an opinion about free programs versus paid programs? Do you really get what you pay for? It all depends on how deep you want to dive into an image. If you really want to dive deep into an image, I believe paying for the programs is definitely worth it. If you don't worry about that, if you just need to do something basic, like let me show you this again real fast. Let me pull something up here for you guys. So if we go to, let me find an image real fast. Okay, so what you got is, I've seen this before, this is the Windows Photo app, which one button click 
It does a great job. And it's free. Comes with the win comes with Windows PC. So basic JPEG images, this thing does a great job. So in this instance, I think free is good. Now, if you had an image that had a little more depth to it, a little more details that had to be pulled out of it, I don't think it could handle it. Like it can't handle raw files. I know that one. I do believe paid programs are definitely worth it. The one I used last week, Darktable, that one's free and it does a lot. I was really impressed with what that one can do. Now, the big thing about a lot of the paid programs is they can like uh, mesh with other programs. So Adobe, if you get Photoshop, Lightroom, they can talk to each other as well as a couple of the other programs that Adobe has. They can all kind of talk to each other. You can go from one to the other and do all kinds of really deep editing. For sports photography, I really don't think you need to do that much if you're doing action shots like this. If you're doing more like maybe senior portraits where you're throwing some green screen effects to it, I think maybe a paid program would definitely be good. So hopefully that answered your question. And no, I'm not Italian. I'm not Italian. I don't talk like this all the time, but I do use my hands a lot. All right. All right, we are going on an hour. Uh, not much more I, I can really see to talk about this program. Just kind of let you look at this last football photo image that it did. Uh, we could do, you know, what the heck? Let's, um, let's go ahead and pick one more image, shall we? Let's just mess with one more. No, I don't want to save it. Oh, then we need to figure out one more thing, don't we? Actually, hold that thought. I found some other things I want to look into. So let's get back to the to the exciting things. I found. Look up here. Up the top, here you can't see it. We have we have cut out. We have batch, collage, combine, create a GIF. So let's see what we can do with these, shall we? All right. Let's go. Let's go to the um. Let's go to this image right here. Well, that's interesting. It kept the same crop. That's kind of bizarre. But anyway, we can talk about that another time. Uh, let's just go right there and we'll go down to like here. We'll call that a good crop. Uh, so what do you got up here? We have, okay. So batch would be a batch edit, edit, edit. That makes sense. What is cut out? So drag your photo. All right. Um, I just had my photo. <laughs> I got to pull it back over. So let's just pick any, let's pick this one. Now, what do you do? Lasso. Oh, so you can, you can, okay. So you could do something like this and cut them out. Okay. Makes sense now. Cut out. Got it. I understand that one now. Okay. So what else do we have? Create a GIF. Drop your photo here. All right. So we're going to drop a photo there. Now, what do you do? Let's go for like 10 seconds. I mean, do you have to put more photos in here? Oh, it's the pro version. So I can't do it anyway. It's the pro version. Darn, I was kind of excited. We could try and create a GIF, but there are free programs out there that you can do a GIF with. But you don't have to pay for it. So interesting. All right. So anyway, let's do this right here. Got this one and it just got rid of it. So that's the viewer. Okay. Got that. So let's play with it just a little bit since we played with the other. Let's try auto levels again. Let's do a higher threshold. Let's see what that does. Do some sharpening. Let's just kind of mess around and see what works the best here. Sharpening on JPEGs, I think, works pretty good in this program. Crop is just like way off though. Let's really crop in, shall we? Shoot tight, crop tighter. So let's go like that. There we go. See now, look, you're drawn right into the action. Let's look at this real fast. That's your photo. It's kind of cool. You see where the action is, but your eye doesn't really get drawn directly to it when you crop in 
it gets better. And if you crop even more, we're going to crop even more now. We're going to go way in there. Now you're really drawn into the action. That's part of why they say shoot tight, crop tighter, because you really want to be drawn into the action. All right, so what I do, do I did, I did some of that. Let's try some, okay, let's play around. Let's, let's say we want the, I may want that color. Let's do that color. Because why not, right? We can, we can do this stuff. Don't need any noise. Dehaze doesn't do much. What else can we do that was kind of fun? So we replaced color. We did that. We sharpened it. We can do some auto contrast. And there we go. That's it. Not great colors, though. I don't like those colors at all. Those are kind of nasty looking. What do we got? Um, let's go back to their helmets now. Now we have to go all the way back. Way back, way, way back to the original. All right, everybody. I am going to call it a night. It's been about an hour. Can't really talk about this program anymore. Don't really see much more that we need to worry about. It's nothing I really care about. It's not a program I am, I'm going to be using again. Uh, what have we got? Anything else we didn't do? Uh, we got the save. So if you wanted to save it, which would be the export, I'm guessing. Got your JPEG preview. That's kind of what it would look like. So, but nothing real fancy. You can set your uh, file destination where you want to save. So nothing too exciting. So with that, I am going to call it a night. Thank you everybody for joining me. Biggie, Sean for dropping by. I appreciate you guys. Uh, next week, don't forget Monday, seven o'clock. We will be doing another, another photo editing stream. I'll find another photo program for you guys. Or maybe, maybe not. Maybe we'll dive back into dark table. I kind of want to dive back into that one. It's got me intrigued would be the best word to describe it. Anyway, everybody, thank you for joining me. Don't forget to get out and shoot, and I'm out of here.